Ladies and gentlemen, you know, almost every day people are fighting to get testing for monkeypox when they suspect they may have it and they're getting the runaround. And these stories are coming out more and more every day. Now it's bad enough that you're sick and the body aches are excruciating and these folks are turning folks away. They are running from one healthcare facility to the next. To me, that makes it worse. Doesn't that also attribute to the spread of something if you're not willing to see them and possibly treat them so you can contain it? How are you containing it if you're forcing people to run around for help? And this seems to be a very prevalent type of story that's going on in America right now. So I have some audio I want you to listen to from NPR. This is yet another person that speaks about getting the runaround when all they wanted to do was get tested. Hey, NPR, tap the play button to hear from StoryCorps with a story about right, one couple's unique quarantine experience. Support for NPR and StoryCorps come from Subaru, partnering with the National Forest Foundation to help replant trees in areas devastated by wildfires. Subaru, more than a car company. Monkeypox is now a global health emergency. According to the CDC, the number of confirmed cases in the U.S. stands at nearly 3,600 and mainly among men who have sex with men. Jackie Fortier of member station KPCC in Los Angeles reports. Two days after Kevin Kwong flew home to California from New York Pride, his hands were so itchy it woke him up. He initially thought it was eczema. Everything started rapidly getting worse. I started to get more spots on my face, more redness, and started leaking fluid. The rash expanded to my elbows, and my hands, and my ankles. An urgent care doctor didn't think it was monkeypox. Kwong's spots were clustered together and looked different from the monkeypox pictures the doctor had seen. Depending on where I was with my symptoms and who I was speaking to, I was getting different answers. During a virtual appointment, a nurse noticed the rash spreading toward his eyes and told him to go to the emergency room. There, doctors told him he may have monkeypox, but they were unprepared to handle a potential case. So they were researching while I was in this room and back and forth on the phone with the CDC. I expected myself as a patient to be in the dark, but I didn't realize how little information was also given to providers and how unprepared they were as well. His lesions were swabbed, but the monkeypox test result wouldn't come back for at least a week. He spent 12 hours in the ER before being sent home. I'm just miserable. I have sores in the back of my throat, in my mouth, all over my body. He says the pain was inescapable. It feels like you stick your hand in water that's too hot, but you cannot pick it out. After a FaceTime call with a friend, he broke down crying after seeing himself on the screen. Your body is being taken over by this thing that you don't understand. It's both painful and terrifying. After days of appointments and very little sleep, Kwong decided to drive to the University of California San Francisco Hospital. There, he was given oxycodone for the pain and swabbed again for a monkeypox test. The next day, UCSF infectious disease specialist, Dr. Peter Chin Hong, contacted him. I thought, wow, this is really, really extensive disease. I've seen other cases of monkeypox before, but they're very limited. Kevin is probably in the top 5% of severity of diseases, and most people probably wouldn't get as severe as Kevin. Because the rash was close to Kevin Kwong's eyes, if left untreated, it could have caused him to go blind. Dr. Chin Hong says the case was so severe, the hospital okayed a prescription of T-pox. That's an antiviral that's been given special clearance by the FDA to treat monkeypox under certain circumstances. I was shocked by how fast Kevin improved. So it was almost like he was a turbo rocket on a way to recovery. Huang thinks he likely contracted monkeypox from a guy he hooked up with during New York Pride. That man did test positive. Despite Kwong's quick turnaround on the antiviral, he still hasn't tested positive. Dr. Chin Hong says health workers may not have rubbed hard enough to get live cells. It's very difficult as a clinician to like 
really get a good sample in these kinds of lesions because the patient is often in pain and you don't like to see people suffer. Guang now takes six antiviral pills a day and no longer needs pain medication. So my face was the first to heal, which I think helped me a lot just mindset wise to be able to recognize who I was in the mirror again. Throughout his ordeal, Kwong has been posting on social media to encourage people to get tested and get the vaccine if they're eligible. For NPR News, I'm Jackie Fortier in Los Angeles. Okay, y'all. So you can see this is really a huge problem in America, and I can see it getting worse. You know, it, it just seems like... Um, if you go out there and look, you're going to find these stories every single day now, you know, um, kind of like the 2020 pandemic, you know, in the beginning was kind of slow, but as it started progressing, you start seeing the individual stories come out. Well, that's the stage we are in when it comes down to monkeypox. And I can imagine these stories are going to become more regular as time goes on and people are not getting the treatment that they feel they should get um, because th those are the stories I'm seeing the most. And some of these folks um, said, you know, and one consistent thing I'm also noticing, people are saying when they go to sleep and wake up, that's when they notice something but they don't notice anything you know prior to and i find that interesting because i've heard that from several people like um they weren't feeling well but they went to sleep and when they woke up that's when they start noticing you know the skin lesions and the body aches and you know just the pain and how excruciating it was and everything I, i'm seeing a pattern of that, you know, but I'm no medical expert and I definitely don't claim to be, but it's just an observation that I am noticing when I'm listening to different stories online. And I've been listening to the stories probably over three weeks now. I've been listening to um, people's symptoms and how they describe how they feel. And it's, it's no joke. That's for sure. And the fact that it mutated, that makes it even scarier as far as I'm concerned. But y'all, please tell me what you think about this story. Oh boy, this is gonna be an interesting fall and winter with this thing going on. And we'll see how America will do with this one because we know uh, the first one, they didn't do so well and still not doing so well. Please leave your comment and subscribe. Don't forget to hit on the notification bell and I'll see you on the next video. Peace, family.